at 267 West Center Street in the heart of downtown Marion is now accepting applications from adults, students, and seniors. The Harding Center is a beautiful historic building offering one-bedroom apartments and efficiencies at affordable rental rates. All utilities are included. Basic cable and internet are available. The Harding Center is equipped with an on-site laundry facility for its residents. The property is located on the Marion City Transit bus line and off-street parking is available. The Harding Center is managed by Starfish Building, LLC, Lois J. Fisher & Associates. For more information, contact them at hardingcenter at gmail.com or give them a call at 740-223-3288 the Harding Center a beautiful place to live in the heart of downtown Mary. This is Scott Spears and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Scott Spears Now. The government has been shut down at the time of this taping for six days. It is currently October the 6th, 2013. Government went down at midnight on October the 1st no end in sight. We're going to talk with a lady today I like a whole lot. She hasn't been on the program in a few months, and I certainly have missed her. She, is, she holds the distinction of uh, being one of the few people in the government, federal level, when the government shut down the last time in 1995 and early 96. Of course, she is the 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow. Before we go to her, though, I do want to mention this. Just learned of this. This is going to be a great event. Uh, Mary Ellen Withrow is going to be showing her art. Did you know she had art? I knew that. Uh, coming up at the Barlow Gallery, 1126 East Center Street, right here in Marion, on Sunday, October the 20th, from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. Mary Ellen, that's going to be great. Oh, yes. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I think most people don't associate you with art. Uh, when did that come about in your life? Well, that was uh, when I was young. <laughs> well, my um, my mother needed uh, some something to entertain her. her. My father died when uh, when uh, he was rather young, and I said, you know, we're going to take art lessons, and so we did. We took art lessons, and um, and that's how I got started. It's a great. Uh, the, uh, this is your work on the card. Yes, uh -huh. and it's a, 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 a fruit. And, but you did all kinds of things, because I think I saw some animals that you had done. Yeah, I did my dog, uh, Blossom, and, um, yeah, I've done other people's dogs, too. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, paintings will you be displaying that day? Uh, well, I don't know. I think it's 12, 12 or 14, yeah. Perfect. I yeah. think it's going to be great. And, again, you don't want to miss that. Coming up, uh, Barlow Gallery right here in Marion Center Street. You can't miss it. Uh, on Sunday, October the 20th, coming right up. And I did want to uh, wish you a belated birthday, Mary Ellen. Oh, thank birthday you. Birthday in October. Like, yes. And you just yeah. did capture the moment. Yes, I captured the moment. You yeah. did, and <laughs> that was that was one that was long overdue. <laughs> long overdue to have you there. Oh, th that was uh, a very good uh, thing. I think it's great that they do that. You learn a lot. You know, you have people that are on the panel with me i learned a lot about them i didn't know yeah it's it's fun mm -hmm. uh did you do anything special for your birthday no i j we just went out to eat well we um we used to go to a movie and go out to eat now we've put it down to just going out to eat <laughs> <laughs> but you had fun <laughs> yeah and still yeah. still going along that is great um Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to get to, I just learned from you, the new $100 bill coming out this Tuesday. Yes. It's kind of exciting because it's been a long time coming out. And uh, it's got, uh, I guess it's got some, it's got some printing on Benjamin Franklin's collar, I guess. I haven't, of course, I haven't seen it, but 
Um, we'll see it as soon as it comes out. <laughs> well, and, and I think people need to know, uh, because I, I think it's important for the people of Marion to know you really orchestrated the quarter uh, mm -hmm. uh, program yeah. that came about in the 90s, or early 2000s, was it? 90s? 90s. 90s. Uh, it, w it actually, uh, yeah, it started in, um, I don't know if it was 2005, and, and it was a 10-year situation, uh, yeah, five, five quarters a year. And, um, and then they did the uh, uh, territories after that. And I guess they're they're doing they're still doing the presidents. I've been asked about that. I haven't heard anything about them except I checked when I I talked to the Mint the other day and they said they were they were doing them. I I don't know. I think they're maybe around Roosevelt Teddy Roosevelt right now. Do you still get uh, Do you still have a lot of contacts in Washington? Well, I have the people that I w there's still the people that I worked with there and. I talked to them once in a while. Well, I was trying to find out um, the cost of a quarter because, you know, I was kind of shocked that, that a penny now is cost two cents, a nickel costs ten cents, and and back when I was treasurer, uh, a penny was less than a penny, and a, a nickel was less than a nickel, and a, and a quarter was five cents. Now a quarter is 11.3 cents, and and it's it's par partly due to the metals, mostly due to the metals, but uh, they also factor in the cost of the production and everything too. But but it's important to know that because people want to do away with the penny. Well, if they do away with the penny, uh, it's going to put the pressure on the nickel, which is uh, twice as much as it's worth costs twice as much as it's worth so there you are you got a problem yeah so so anyway um so much for that we don't we, we don't, we don't want to lose the penny the whole lucky penny <laughs> well idea. you know there's organizations that fight for the penny and then there's organizations that fight to not have the penny you know there's organizations for everything they'd come and see me and talk about you know why they they want the penny or why they didn't want the penny and well, wh whenever they do away with the penny, it's going to be a shock to the, to the economy. I think they, it would. they've got to face that. So I, th I yeah. think you're exactly. We got right. enough shocks going on right, right now. Speaking yeah. of shocks, yes. you, you have it right. right. We, we are in the middle of something very peculiar here right now. It is a government shutdown. Uh, before we get into the current one, I want to go back to 1995. Uh, the 1995 shutdown happened November 14th through November 19th. And then again, December 16th through January 6th, 1996, the government was shut down for a total of 28 days during that uh, shutdown of 95. That was because it was between President Bill Clinton and the Republican Congress over funding of Medicare, education, environment, and public health uh, over the 1996 federal budget. The government shut down, uh, the government eventually shut down after Clinton vetoed the spending bill the Republican-controlled Congress sent him. And uh, this is a bit of history, Mary Ellen, certainly uh, regarding you, because you were there. Yes, I was there. And I was working because my bureaus were both having to produce. They were making money while they were... <laughs> the Congress wasn't going to spend money. <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps on turning. <laughs> the wheel just keeps going. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. But anyway, I was necessary, and it was <laughs> it was like a vast wasteland in Treasury. You'd look down the halls, and there was nobody there. And um, so anyway, I was considered necessary. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like in Washington when this happens? Oh, everybody is mad. Yeah. I bet they are furious. You know, the people, the ones that are suffering, um, they are just, I mean, they, they said they were never going to vote for another Republican when this got done. Yeah, that was how they felt. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if they're still feeling that <laughs> way. <laughs> you know, what? Well, it, it certainly is, is interesting. But back then, a compromise did happen. Yeah. Um, when that compromise happened, does it make everybody, do they breathe easier? Do they say, Phew, thank goodness well, that they was were, over? Yeah, they were glad it was over, but they're not going to forget. They they were very bitter about that. The, the people, the average 
working government person was very bitter, and I would imagine they're bitter today. And when I talked to the Mint, um, she said, we're all working, but she said, we're not supposed to be. And I was surprised at that. I don't know why they weren't supposed to be, because we were supposed to be back then. But anyway, that was what she said. Of course, as I say, we shut down in, in late 1995, early 1996, and then here we are some 19 years later, mm -hmm. uh, or 18 years later, uh, at it again, currently in the middle of a government shutdown. Now, I want to run this down because I don't know that people have fully felt the effect yet because we've only been yeah. closed down six days. Right. Now, here's some of the things that are going on. National parks, of course, are closed. Uh, the WIC program was mm -hmm. supposed to run out of money this Tuesday, but they have passed some kind of resolution to get it through the end of the month, hopefully, really? I, that, as I have it, o through the end of October, but then it's going to be in trouble. Uh, millions of veterans will not uh, receive benefits if, if this goes over two weeks. We're almost at a week already. Uh, Head Start programs are starting to close. No funding there. Um, for every week the government is shut down, 10 children with cancer will not be able to begin their clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Statue of Liberty is closed, our emblem of, of, you know, bring us everybody. And October 17th, which wh is what makes this a unique shutdown, on October the 17th, the government exhausts its ability to borrow money until mm -hmm. Congress raises the debt ceiling. Treasury would have $30 billion on hand, only enough to cover, uh, to run the government for just a few days. Yes, that's right. It's coming. Uh, Mary Ellen, what do you, and all, if you don't know, if you've been under a rock, this is all caused because um, Obamacare is passed. The Congress does not want to fund it. The Senate, Senate obviously wants to fund it. President Obama wants to fund it. And we're stuck. Yeah. Mary Ellen, what do you make of it? Well, the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to get. I know that. Um, you know, I, I think about this. Um, a lot of the people that are uh, really against uh, funding Obamacare and is causing this disturbance are very strong on defense, and they want our country to be strong out there. This is making our country weak. The fact that our money is at such uh, a problem and that they can't get things worked out makes the United States look weak and we're the world currency we could lose that that would make a big difference uh, as far as our finances are concerned um, you know I, I think I've told you this before three-fourths of our money is outside of the United States and the Federal Reserve pays interest on that money that goes outside the United States and that money is paid into the general fr fund and it's to our advantage that we're the world currency and and we were afraid we would lose that when the um, euro came out, but then the euro hasn't really been that successful. And so here we are looking looking really ridiculous to the world, uh, where where people are are not agreeing to pay for things that they've already agreed to pay for. That's what is sick. What has happened here, Mary Ellen? Uh, John Boehner, I mean, the footage, I, they've shown it quite a bit, said, I don't agree with this, Obamacare, but we it's what people have wanted. Somewhere we popped, though the wheels came off here, and now we're not going to fund it in the Congress, and now we're in a government shutdown. What What's going on? Well, you know, y you had Obama elected, and he created Obamacare, and then he was elected again by a pretty good majority. And then you had the Supreme Court verified this program. And then they have had 40 bills trying to do away with it in Congress. Why don't they leave it alone? And if it's not going to be a success, it'll die. You know, I have said the exact same thing. I don't understand. If people hate this, yeah. wouldn't it be to their advantage to watch it fail? Right. I, I, it's very peculiar to me. So if we do believe it's going to succeed, though, why do they want to stop it? Because they're afraid it'll be a success. As a United States citizen, is it 
For those politicians, do you really believe that they represent their district? They evidently do because they say that the people that are causing this are safe in their districts. And they said the Koch brother, brothers have all this money and they've threatened that they will run people against them if they don't uh, vote against this. And so that, that's where they are. Um, so, you know, and, and why Boehner doesn't put this out for a vote? He's got the votes. He could, he could put it out for a vote and he's afraid to. So there you are. What will happen? I mean, none of us are, are, are fortune tellers, but what's going to happen in the next few oh, years? I have no idea. Um, it, it is just so disturbing, and I think people don't really pay a lot of attention to this, but they feel uncomfortable about it. And the longer the, uh, that it goes, the more we're going to get uncomfortable and the more bad things are going to come out. And, and there's got to be pressure. There's terrible pressure, I'm sure, going on with everybody. I'm sure there's terrible pressure with the president and there's terrible pressure with, with Congress. I would think that the powerful Republicans would take care of this instead of letting, uh, letting the, the few that are doing this get away with it. How can the few manipulate the that's, majority? That's the question. Wh how can they? Uh, they're evidently backed up somewhere, and maybe backed up by the Koch brothers, brothers. I don't know. But uh, somebody is, is pressuring here. Uh, you entered politics uh, late 1960s, wasn't it, Mary Ellen? Or that was uh, the school yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, 69, 69. I started on the school board. Yeah. What has happened? It hasn't always been like this, has it? Well, it's, it used to be terrible. I mean, not when I started, but you go back to when Abraham Lincoln, we, you know, you saw, you went to the movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some of the things they did. And um, it, it was, pr uh, politics have, has always been pretty rough. And then they pass laws to try to keep this from happening and that from happening. And and uh, but th there is a, this not getting along part that is so difficult right now that um, they don't um, they don't work things out and 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 they should. Does any of this uh, lay on the doorstep of the Supreme Court decision that a corporation is a person, as far as donating to campaigns, donating to people? I don't know if that has anything uh, has any sway on that or not. Um, it was very, it was not a, a a good thing when that happened. I know, but um, I haven't um, I haven't heard anything mentioned about that, and that's interesting. I I know obviously that you're a Democrat. People know that uh, worked under Clinton and certainly supported mm -hmm. Al Gore, and I'm sure supported John Kerry. Yeah. Where do you put Obama in your lifetime? Um, on the Democratic presidential scale? Well, I think he's to be given a lot of credit for what he has done. Um, you know, it, it's amazing that uh, somebody that is, uh, is elected that is uh, uh, of color and, um, and, you know, you don't know what's in the future. And, but I think a lot of this has to do with that. Uh, I think that's maybe uh, something based there that's causing this. You know. That being said, there does seem to be a general dislike of President Obama by the Republicans. Mm -hmm. But yes. they, they had a general dislike of Clinton, too. They certainly they, did. They picked on him every day of the week. They certainly did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think they gave him a moment's peace. No, they didn't. Uh, but say that to say this, that President Obama, how much of this is just about, as he said, trying to stick it to him? Yeah, it, that's, I think there is something to that. Do, how mu if you had to give a percentage here, how much is truly about um, Obamacare and how much is truly about getting him because we couldn't get him at the polls? Mm -hmm. Well, I, they're upset because they lost the election. We all know that. They don't take it lightly, and they're causing themselves to have more problems in the future the way they're operating right now. What do you, 
well, I, I say well, nobody knows what's going to happen, but different than the 95 shutdown, uh, in 11 days, the government's in trouble. Uh, October 17th, if we don't raise the debt ceiling, uh, we're going to be in a world of trouble. Everybody is, and everybody's going to feel that. D is it conceivable that in 11 days our government will be essentially broke? We hope not. There's a difference, though, between this one and the last one. Um, Clinton was running for re-election in a year, and um, Obama is not running for anything, and, and so you have a different situation. Um, the, the fact that... Um, well, maybe we'll have to go back to the platinum coins. Remember that deal? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> it, 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 you know, and, and I, 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 I worry about this because as th we're taping this on a <laughs> Sunday evening because this morning these people on these talk shows aren't budging, and we're no. 11 days away. Right, but um, you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's some very strange thing could happen and change the whole picture, so... Do you think, because a lot of people feel that what will eventually happen is some compromise will happen and that uh, maybe Obamacare will be delayed a year. Um, do you think there's anything that's going to happen in regard to that? No, I don't know. Um, I, I rather doubt it, but who knows? You know, I don't know. October 17th is going to be a very interesting day, and, and I, um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be something. Well, why, Mary Ellen, is this uh, Obamacare such a divisive issue with everybody? I mean, they, they, I, I, it's not true, and I want to make sure to say that, but, boy, they've talked about death panels in regard to this and all kinds of things. Why is it so, this is just so hated? Well, it's Obama's baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that mm -hmm. says a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's a few things I want to get to in this program. Uh, what what do, before we leave the subject though, Mary Ellen? What do you hope happens? Hope. Oh, I hope we get it settled and and everything proceeds the way it should with our government. Um, you like to see government uh, work the way it's supposed to, and our founding fathers, I imagine, they're turning over right now. You know. If Obamacare, if and when Obamacare does come, because I think most people feel that's going to happen, where do you foresee it in five years, good or bad thing? I have no idea. But, you know, any, and they have always said this, that uh, Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid all went through this, and it was quite a struggle. So it, it probably will be a struggle, but they, he's gotten it passed where nobody else could get it passed. Yeah. Why was he able to do that? Well, he um, he concentrated all of his effort on that in the beginning, and it may have been good or it may not have been good, but he got it passed. Um, you know, they say he should have done other things, and who knows. But anyway, he, he accomplished something that the other presidents, uh, you know, they've tried to do that ever since... Nixon, I think, or maybe Eisenhower, I don't know, but uh, for a long time they've tried to get, tried to get health care, couldn't do it. Obama, certainly in, in most people's lifetime, good or bad, like him or hate him, has made some things happen and made, right. some, made some very big statements. Does he, in, in 100 years, go up on Mount Rushmore, do you think? Oh, I don't know. Um, could be. Um, they... Um, they have a lot of fun with putting different people up there, don't they? They do. <laughs> well, I, I think it's interesting because most people say uh, the two that in recent times they've said would have gone up there, uh, on the Republican side it would be Reagan, but then they say we can't really find the backing for that. He was just popular for them. And then people say Clinton, but they say he was just hounded for so long that it just probably won't happen. But for Obama, maybe, I don't know. Well, I'd like to see Franklin Roosevelt up there myself. I, You know, I think there's a big case to be made for that. Yeah. A big case. Yeah. Uh, before we get out of here, though, because Mary Ellen and I haven't been together in a long time, and we both hope that the government will work itself out here. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we all hope that. Yes. You, you, me, and a lot of people. Um, 
I want to talk about some things since we haven't been together in a while. Two people passed away who we had in common. Uh, they were both national people and just want to talk a little bit about them. In July, we lost uh, Helen Thomas, mm-hmm. dean of the White House Press Corps. Matter of fact, I don't think we can get the picture, but there's a picture of her and I right over there. A uh, very important woman in my life for reasons that the audience will know. Uh, what would you make of Helen? Oh, I, I liked her. I kept running into her at Newman Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> And we'd talk, and yes, she was fascinating. And I, um, I watched what happened to her during um, George Bush's administration, where she got, I guess, put in the back of the room. Wasn't that what that happened? That was it. <laughs> yeah, sent to the back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did she get a bad rap? Oh, think? I think so. Yes, I, I think many times uh, uh, things are a bad rap. Yeah. Uh, another person we had in common, uh, Governor Gilligan, here yes. in Ohio, passed away in in August, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a really good connection with Governor Gilligan. Yes, I called him up and wanted I wanted the license bureau back <laughs> <laughs> back in nineteen. That was in nineteen sixty nine, and um, they the state was running it, and. Um, I called him up. I didn't talk to him. I talked to his chief of staff. I said, I'm, I want to run for office. I'm, I just ran for clerk of courts and lost, and I want to get my name known. And so um, they, they said, well, there's, uh, there's, some, there's a bank that's trying to accomplish this, too. And uh, so it all worked out, and... Um, I got the license bureau. (laughs) (laughs) Governor Gilligan, unfortunately, being squeezed in between two terms of Governor Rhodes and generally probably got in, I think, in most people's idea because of the whole Kent State debacle Mm -hmm. where Rhodes was in big trouble there. Right. Um, Unfortunate, when he died, I don't think most people knew who he was. He's probably the least known governor from Ohio. He was rather, uh, rather quiet and uh, you know <clears throat> well just to mention this he came into Marion campaigning um, and I I ran across this in my memoirs um, I I had a painting of African violets and he auctioned off the painting for me and, and it, the money went to the Democratic Party and uh, I there was a picture of that in the the Marion Star I ran across it the other day mm. Yes, and um, that painting will not be in the show <laughs> because I don't know who bought it. I I, I didn't know her name, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> did did you ever keep a diary? Uh, I I did until when I became U.S. Treasurer. Uh, Josh, um, I forget his last name was Chief of Staff for for uh, Benson. Got into a lot of difficulty. He had to take his his. Um, uh, journal to court, and they, they it became court possessed by the court, and so therefore I didn't keep a journal for a while. I was too I was I was afraid to, mm. and after I was there a while, then I started keeping a journal. Mm. Yeah. It's, was it a was it a pretty um, detailed journal or just a kind of overview? Overview. Overview. Yeah. Uh, I want to tell a Governor Gilligan story, and I think we have time to do this, because, and, and heavens knows, this is not Republican or Democrat, so don't hit me with this, because that's the punchline. But uh, Governor Gilligan, in his, I believe he was 92 when he died, too, ironically, same age as Helen, uh, three years ago, when he was 88, 89, he came to Marion to sit on a panel of a show I was doing uh, called uh, Exchange Club at WMRN. And I can still remember the panel that week, was uh, Governor Gilligan, Charlie Evers, Marianne Michaels, Lou Conkle, a lawyer here in town who's mm-hmm. since passed away, mm-hmm. uh, Larry Barnett, the umpire, mm-hmm. Bob Bender, and Fran Ball, who at that time was presi- our, uh, principal at Marion Catholic High School. Now, the show simply was this. What we did was we would do a current event, we would do a question from a listener, and then we would do a trivia question at the end. Trivia question was very minute. It was just kind of a fun thing to wrap up the episode because sometimes we did serious topics. And at the end of the episode, the question for that particular week when Governor Gilligan was on was, uh, um, what do you call a pig that has warts on its head? And we went through, and everybody was kind of giving answers what they thought it was, and the answer was warthog. 
But we got to, uh, we went to Marianne, and Marianne said, well, I don't really know, and we went to Charlie, and I think Charlie said pot belly, and we yeah. went around, and we got to Governor Gilligan, and I said, Governor, I said, uh, uh, what do you call a pig with warts on his head? And he said, Republican. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. And it brought the house down, yeah. and our cameraman was there for that, but it did, and that was a funny, funny moment, and Republicans don't email me about that. It's the way it happened. He did it. I didn't. Uh, Mary Ellen, I want to get one uh, thought on one current event that's going on right now. A guy who apparently looks like he's going to throw his head into the ring in, in 2016, oddly enough. Jesse Ventura has been making a lot of really? noise. Really? Absolutely. And he says, basically, he has said if he gets Howard Stern, and there's a method to this that I want to say, if he gets Howard Stern to run as his vice president so he doesn't have to spend money on advertising, he can just use Howard's show for advertising, that he will run. Really? What do you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure I would be excited about that um, because um, I guess... His record wasn't that great when he was in office. Yeah. Is it conceivable somebody with that type of name recognition, not really affiliated with either party, could win an election? Well, um, it's hard to say. You you can't say things won't happen because sometimes they do. Uh, I really I don't know. Um, I don't think Howard Stern has that great a reputation, so that would be a problem, I think. I think it might. I, I, I'm fascinated by it, though, because I think if mm -hmm. he does run, I think it's certainly going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know where the media would go with him, because he does seem to be, I think he's more liberal than conservative, but I, he really has no uh, party allegiance anywhere, so I'm not sure how they would cover him. Let me ask you a question. Uh, do you think that if women were working with this situation in government, that it would be where it is today? That's a good question. If it were women on both sides? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think it would. I don't think it would either. I think... Um, I don't think we're too far away from our first female president. Mm -hmm. I don't either. And I think uh, it very well could be somebody you're very familiar with. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked the night of the election last year. I asked you that question: Will mm -hmm. Hillary run? You said you didn't know, but you leaned toward yes. I think I think she's running. Is yes. she? I think she is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Biden can knock her out of the box? I don't hardly think so. But he's he's a very popular person. I like Bi Biden a lot, but I would go for Hillary. Uh, I think she's. Uh, I think she's the one I would really like to see there. Who do you think Obama would endorse? Well, um, that would be a rough one. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that, that's a decision I wouldn't want to make. <laughs> you know, no, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't either. Uh, he's, <laughs> it's going to be. Well, I, I was surprised at the moves that Biden has been making. I really have been because I thought he would respect um the the distance for Hillary there I I don't know it'll it'll be exciting to watch well I said this I, I don't know what it was uh, because Hillary was I mean she was always in politics to a certain degree yeah but to hold office came later in life mm -hmm. uh, I've always said I don't know what happened in in the last Democratic primary I think she in the beginning went around it wrong but I think the best speeches I've ever heard in the political arena came from Hillary Clinton in the last two months mm -hmm. of that and to, by that point sadly she was too far behind to come back yeah but she put on a campaign and and uh, that is not a, a judgment on Republicans or Democrats she was just one of the most tremendous debaters campaigners mm -hmm. in that last two months first three months something was off last you know that months. that happens I remember watching Mondale uh, after uh, he was out of the race, and um, he was funny, and 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 it, it w as well went to John Glenn. He he they were so uptight when they were running that um, they didn't come across as their normal selves, and and you know it's tremendous pressure. So um, I, I I really think uh, that happens more than once where. 
where they relax and then they're really good, you know. Bob Dole did that as well. I thought uh, he relaxed up a little bit after. Well, yeah, he ran. I yeah, I think um I think Bob Dole uh, the Viagra commercials I don't think helped him at all. Wonder why he did that. Well, I don't know, but I think it was a mistake. I there's yeah. certain products I don't think you want to no, endorse. No, uh, uh, especially uh, his age. I mean, you know. Yeah. And yeah. he's still around, and yeah. I, I saw an interview with him. I don't think he supports what's going on right now either. I bet he doesn't. So, well, you take those major Republicans we're talking about, how they can't control these guys. I don't understand that. It's very strange. I don't know if yeah. I don't know what drives that thing. Uh, you came up there. I, one time I saw a video of you uh, recently uh, from years ago, I think when you were state treasurer, big supporter of John Glenn when you said oh yes why do you think he didn't never got it well because he ran out of money ran out of why where, where was the money for him why couldn't he well I don't know the answer to that um, he um, yeah I after he uh, got out of the race then when Al Gore was running in four years I, I said I'm not going to support anybody because I'm going to wait and see who gets it. But then when I went to see Al Gore, I was so, I said, well, he, he, I believe everything that he believes. And so I was for Al Gore then. But it was interesting that, that uh, the John Glenn, I can remember that so well when he got out of the race and, and he was in debt and, and Al Gore was in debt. And, um, it, it's, uh, terrible pressure running for president. It's a costly business. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. Yeah. Do want to mention this again. Mary Ellen Withrow will be at the Barlow Gallery located 1126 East Center Street right here in Marion on Sunday, October the 20th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. showing her art. Would not want to miss that if I were you. Mary Ellen, we haven't been together in a while <laughs> and my goodness, it's always fun. It is. And I, t I think I'm, I'm going to be calling on you if we don't settle this thing up by <laughs> the 17th. Oh, and yes. <laughs> well, well, we'll chew it around for a while. We'll, then, we'll keep, yeah. we'll keep uh, going around it. Mary Ellen Withrow, one of the true treasurers. Uh, there's a word that works right. Treasures of uh, Marion, Ohio and certainly uh, political life.